Hello everybody, Spotted Gecko here again, bringing you another video for the game World of Warships Legends. And today, I'm going to be doing a guide in gameplay to the uh, Russian Tier 7 battleship, the Lenin. Now, I'm going to be looking at the upgrade slots, the stats, the consumables, the armor viewer, as well as the commander of choice for this particular build, and that is going to be Kedrov. All right. Now, right now, uh, we're looking at the base view of the Lenin in photo mode with it all camos off. So you can see her in all her glory in her base metal skin with the battleship gray. You can see all the secondaries along the back. You got those three triple turrets at the front, which are powerful. You got your seaplane platform on the rear here. A lot of people refer to it as the whaling platform. And flags are waving in the wind there. Otherwise, she's a pretty darn good-looking ship, and she is a really good vessel. I think, uh, obviously, like all Russian ships, she's uh, very, very vulnerable on the broadside. But, man, this thing can bow tank like nothing else. Like, it's really good at that. So, let's pop this out here. All right, there she is in all her glory in the Fjord. And now, let's go into the actual stats. Now, we're first going to start with the upgrade slots. Now, this is my uh, second guide in gameplay. My first guide in gameplay with, is with my commander of choice. I like Lev on board this ship, but I want to experience what Kedrov is also like on board this ship. He's more of your survivor commander, and we're going to see how that ship performs today in a standard match after I go through the guide here. Okay, so first things first. Tier 7 ship, we've got five upgrade slots. Now, for the first one, I'm still going to be making use of aiming systems. With the guns on this baby, you the aiming systems are really nice. However, I wouldn't be surprised if some people choose this one because the uh, turret traverse speed um, on the ship is relatively, uh, you know, um, slow. So you do want to increase that. So I do increase that in here, but I find that I don't need the additional here. I much rather use the aiming systems here because I don't want the additional 5% to my reload time. Okay, so I'm choosing aiming systems. Now for the second one, if you watch my guides and gameplays, you know how much I absolutely love the propulsion mod. It's mainly for my style of play with battleships, a lot of stop and go. I want that 50% acceleration, which is a good uh, bonus against uh, potential torpedoes coming at you as well. All right. The next one, we only can choose the one that's target acquisition. And on the final one here, um, now this one is tricky. Some people actually will probably leave this one blank. However, you take secondary, sure, you get the extra reload time, but this is really not a secondary build. The main battery mod, so I am going to choose this one. Uh, getting that minus 12% to my um, reload is really, really nice on a survivor build. However, my Traverse speed is going to take a major hit. So, however, even with that, with Ketharov on here, your traverse speed can still get really, really good. So, I've definitely chosen this. Into, um, I've also checked, I chose some other things too. We'll, we'll find out as I do. Okay. There's lots of ways you can build up with Ketharov here, but uh, this is the way I'm going to go with it. And it seems to work out okay. Now, let's look at the stats. Now, this is with Ketharov on here already. Now, Ketharov is a high level commander of mine. Survivability right now, we've got a nice 63,200 hull points on this baby. Armor come, goes from 19 to 425. And we do have a torpedo damage reduction on here, 28%, which is not that great for a tier 7 ship. But you know what? That's still better than nothing. Because you think about it, when you got uh, 22,000, 24,000 yield Shimakaze torpedoes coming at you, that's still going to reduce it by four to 5,000 points. It's still, you know, one torp is going to be a lot of damage on you. Anyways, artillery-wise... Now, this is where the beauty of this ship sits. You've got three triple 406 millimeter guns. Beautiful guns. My firing range with um, Ketharov is lower than uh, Lev. It's at 17.5 kilometers. So you really don't, right now it's 17.5 because I have an epic booster on there. But you really don't want to go below 17 if you can help it. Especially because this ship is going to be facing a lot of your models, Kerfers, the legendary tier ships, Iowas, etc. You want that range. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me there. You can see right now my reload time is sitting at 26.9 seconds. My turret time, look at that. That's a beautiful 24-second turret time. 
Now, of course, I can get that down even more if I did not choose the, um, the main battery as the final upgrade slot and went with the secondary. That would drop down to close to 20 seconds, which would be incredibly good. But 24 already is extremely good. Our secondary armaments, we got six dual 100s and we got four triple 152s. So that secondary thing might not, but you know, if anything gets in that close to you, you know, you're probably going to give it sunk. Anyways, maneuverability, it's a pretty healthy 29.4 knots. Turn circle, a beautiful 840. Rudder shift, pretty good at 13.5. Concealment, it's still a big ship. You are going to get spotted. Now, let's have a look at the armor viewer. I'm telling you, this ship has beautiful armor on here. Now, we're just going to look initially at two spots. Four aft, I should say three spots. Uh, uh, decking, but uh, the vulnerable area. Now, we're going to look at the vital ship part, the Citadel. This is, the most, this is one of the most important. As you can see, the Citadel on here does sit above the waterline. It is the, uh, the Achilles heel of all the Russian battleships. So you got a citadel that goes from the forward turret all the way back to just um, past the, uh, the smokestack. You have the citadel sitting above the waterline. Uh, the, well, I guess you could say the one good thing about it, if we look at the citadel, the citadel deck area, it's got 140 millimeters of armor. So that's really, really nice to have. Thank you to that. And, of course, we have a nice little uh, belt along there against torpedoes. However, it's weak. Like, I've caught a few Lenins with this Lenin on the broadside and sunk them in one salvo. So, you have to be aware and cognizant of your ship. You're going to want to go with the strength of the ship, and that is bow tanking it with an angle. All right? Now, if we take out the Citadel right now... And let's have a look at the fore and aft because you're going to be doing a lot of angling with this ship. Beautiful armor on here. You got fore and armor belt of 100 right there. That's the icebreaker bow right there. Beautiful. So if they hit you along there, they're going to bounce. Now, if we look at the actual plating, it's 32 mils, which is fabulous. 32 mils is awesome. Not a whole lot of ships are going to overmatch that. That, and that's like that for both the fore and the aft. And the deck is also 32 millimeters, which is beautiful as well. Now, we take that off for a moment. And let's just have a quick look at the uh, decking under. Let me just get to it. Let me bring that up again. Not that one. I don't want that one. I think it's just, this is the one I want. Yes. Okay. Let's get to the deck. Look at that. 32 millimeter decking. You got to like that to 45 millimeter decking. That can stop the penetration values of a number of those uh, HE shells. And that's all along the deck. So you have to say that this ship is beautifully armored. So when you're playing it, you want to keep it bow tanked. You can do this if you want direct bow, but I would prefer doing the angles here. If you can get that to nice 45 degrees, you can get all three turrets in. Beautiful, beautiful ship. That's what I love it for that. Okay, now, overview of this ship. Let's have a look at it. We have superior AP penetration. Above average AP shell penetration. I'm telling you, these things are beautiful. Okay, sure shot. This is your Russian ballistics. You have good ballistic trajectories, maintaining velocity, making easier aim. Yes, it, it's beautiful at that. If you played the Russian battleships, you know how much good the Russian battleships uh, ballistics are. It's also agile, above average ability to change the direction. So if you got to get that direction change, it can be swift. Now, it says here in the write-up, the Lenin was one of the variants of a high-speed battleship with 406 millimeter battery, which is Project 21, developed under the big ocean-going fleet, which never um, happened. A distinctive feature of the project was the concentration of the main battery turrets in the ship's bow. Year of design was in 1936, okay? It's a blueprint battleship. Now, let's move out of here. Let's take a quick look at the consumables. Now, as we all know, the one uh, detriment for the um, consumables for the Russian battleships is the fact that we don't have unlimited damage control party. You get to start with the base three. The consumable duration is six seconds. Reload time is only 30 seconds, so that's kind of nice. Mind you, you have to be aware of how you use them and when you use them. So fires can be very, very deadly on your ship. Now, 
We do have repair parties here. Our repair parties are almost 500 hull points per second with a 19, uh, with, yeah, that's pretty good. We got three of those. And of course, right now, I've been making use of the uh, spotter planes to give me that extra accuracy when I'm going up against those uh, legendary ships or if I have a nice little broadside waiting, I'll put the plane in the air. But uh, some people, you might want to choose the, um, the enhanced secondary battery because you do have a lot of secondary batteries on the rear of the ship. But you, you know what? I think the spotter plane is probably best for this, uh, for this ship. Uh, boosters, we have an epic booster on there. The reason I have it on there is because I want the extra range to my guns. The extra speed is nice too, but that extra range to my guns is really important. And we have our flag. Now we are going to put a camo on here. We'll put the uh, CC camo on for our CCs and we'll use that on here. Okay, let's move out of here. Now let's look at the man of the hour. This is Mikhail Kedrov, okay? He is one of my uh, higher level uh, commanders. I do make use of Lev. I did a guiding gameplay with Lev. I do personally prefer Lev on here. And in my opinion, Lev is the better battleship commander for the uh, Lenin. That's just my opinion. Some people are going to probably think that Ketrov is. But I want to do a Ketrov guiding gameplay. And you know what? Ketrov performs very, very well on the Lenin as well. So I think maybe both are viable for the Lenin. It depends on your play style, okay? So let's see how I have Lev set up for this. Now, now I initially have, um, I had Lev with uh, Cunningham and uh, Sharni on board. However, I wanted to offset my uh, lot, my, um, well, actually I wanted to get a better uh, reload time without having to use the Brawler because the Brawler skill I'm finding for, Len for the Lenin. You, that massive loss of range of 10% really, really hurts your ship at these uh, Tier 7 and Legendary levels. So I didn't want to use that. So I ended up putting um, the uh, Pav um, Ravel on here, who's high level, as well as Madden, who's high level, to get the, uh, to get the um, battery reload time down by around 6... Uh, I guess that's around 7%. And also... You get the added bonus from um, from Madden where you get the additional uh, traverse time, uh, which is great. Now, the base trait for Ketrov is the actual traverse time of the battleship guns. Another reason why they've gone down so much. So what I've chosen here is I made it primarily a survivor build. We've got um, the risk of catching fire for this one is maxed out at minus 8%, which is wonderful. Our second level, I chose the crisscross to give me... The um, traverse speed there of another minus, plus 1.2 degrees. So that's why we've got that traverse speed down to 24, which is beautiful. Those guns really move quickly from side to side. And then once again here, instead of choosing the volunteer or the collective labor for better uh, damage control, I decided to go with firefighter because I cannot, I cannot not take this. You know, you, you take a loss in your damage control party duration of 40%. However... The risk of catching fire combined with the front, we have a 20% re reduction in our risk of catching fire. We're still going to be caught fire on the big ships, but the cruisers are going to have a hard time starting fires on us at that level. And we all know we have HE spamming cruisers like Cleveland, Wichita, all those at this level. And then the Wooster, man. Anyways, and here I chose Master Mechanic to give me some uh, another repair chart, another repair party, which is great. And finally, we definitely chose Will to Rebuild. Beautiful, beautiful legendary skill this is. Mind you, you might want to offset your fires by using the fire fight with fire. However, I went with this. I just find it much more viable. Okay, well, that's how I have um, Ketrov set up. Now let's head on back. Now let's take this ship out in a standard match, and you can see how well the uh, Lenin performs with Ketrov on board. Okay, so please stick around for that. Well, thank you for sticking around to watch this match with the uh, Lennon pilot or captain by Ketrov. This is a pre-recorded match. Do note that. And I'm simply doing the audio over top of it afterwards. Also, this is not a spectacular 5, 6, 7 sticking match. No. This is going to be your standard average match you can expect with the Lennon. The Lennon is a very good ship, so you can expect very good matches. We're in the northern waters. We're on the Dominion-type um, gameplay. 
And we are going to be spawning up. Let's have a look. I don't remember where we spawned, but we'll find out in a moment here as we, once we get it up and running. Okay, we're spawning on the south side, on the west. And I can tell you right now, our entire fight is going to take place along the western area here. Now, we do have a Shimakaze on our team. It's the only destroyer in the match. And they have a bunch of um, cruisers and battleships as well as those legendaries. And what's going to be interesting in here is I do recall, you can watch the Len and deal with a Yamato. So that's going to be fun to watch, actually. Anyways, and how the uh, Lennon can really take it out quite quick. Okay, so we're starting off here. I'm thinking, well, I got the Shimmy on my side with the Wichita off to my right here. Now, usually a lot of people on this map will go up to the point to the left there on the island. And there's usually a big fight up there. However, I'm wondering if these ships are actually going to do that. So I'm slowly moving out at the moment. I want to see what they're going to do first. And I want to have an idea what the, um, the guys in the middle are going to be doing as well. Sometimes those guys in the middle will cart down this way. Sometimes they'll go off to the east. We just have to wait and see. Now, right now, it looks like the Wichita is going to stay over here. The Shimmy is going to go down there and start spotting out the middle there, which is pretty good. Now, I have to be aware because when you have those legendary ships as well as Tier 7 battleships, they've got the range to strike me from this distance. And this is one reason why you want to have range on your Lenin here. And I got 17.5 with the Survivor ship. That's pretty good. With Lev, you can get that way up over 18, which is what you want. But anyways, we're going to take a shot on that um, Legendary Conqueror first. And I think my first, my first salvo of the day is going to miss. And look at that. Completely potatoed it. <laughs> now we're going to see if we can get another shot away. But just before he gets behind the eye, we're going to keep him uh, targeted. And uh, we are going to get the shot away. But you know what? We're going to hit the island, unfortunately. She just couldn't get it reloaded in time. We only get the um, the inside turret on it, and that's about it. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, wow, they have a lot of red ships coming over to that point over there. Now, if I brought my ship out, my thinking was, if I brought my ship out there, I'm going to get sunk in no time. Doesn't mean doesn't matter how well armored this ship is. So I'm going to keep it back here. We're going to try and back it up, and we are going to start making use of the um, the island as partial protection here. Now, our Shimikaza is doing a lot of spotting right there, which is wonderful. Well done, Shimikaza, for doing that. Now, we on that side, we have the Conqueror. We've got a Mogami over there. I believe there's a, um, a Kutasov. I also believe there's a Yamato hanging over here. And we are going to have to deal with a lot of this stuff. Now, I think we only end up with about two Seekings in this match. We could have gotten a lot more. And I believe we're well over 150,000 in damage in this match. So, yeah, Kedroff performs well. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this match, you know, your average match in the Lennon is going to be a good match. As long as you're not showing your broadside to um, other battleships, you're going to have good matches in the Lennon. But, you know, at times you got to risk that broadside. But at least you got the uh, fast ridership and turn circle on here, which is good. So we're going to back it up here. We're going to get all three turrets uh, loaded up and ready to go. There's a Mogami sitting out there. We are being radared, but it's no big deal at the moment because they can't hit me. Radar is gone. Now I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to try and see if I can land some stuff on that Mogami. And then I realize, well, there's that Conqueror again. So we're going to take some good shots right on the Citadel line on the Conqueror. No Citadel, but wait, we're going to get penetrations on this one. Look at that. Five penetrations. 15,000 damage right there on the Conqueror. So Lennon, yeah, Lennon can handle the, the, the legendary ships. Moving forward a bit here because we want to keep that Conqueror from targeting us. Now we're going to fire again. On the Conqueror here, hoping for some penetration. Citadel would be great. Beautiful. Now we're up to 30,000. Just like that. Two salvos, 30,000. All via penetrations. I mean, we've done a lot of damage to that Conqueror. Conqueror is down to like one third. Now, however, we uh, misjudge here. And the Conqueror gets a really good hit on us. Because you got to look at I'm showing my broadside to the Conqueror. But I'm trying to utilize the island 
as a means of defense. And watch me, I get hammered here. Look at that. Two citadels on me right there. Ouch. That hurt. <laughs> so. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Now that Conqueror, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get another good shot on him. Now they do have a cruiser coming through here. We're going to get the shot away, but unfortunately the island stopped our shells from getting through. We could have sank the Conqueror right there. So now we have to forget about it. And there's a reason why I'm going to forget about it. Because right there, you see it. A Yamato. Five clicks in. He's coming around the point there, so... Luckily, I've got a good fast reload, and on top of that, I got good fast turning guns. We've already got our guns turned and targeting the Yamato. Problem right here is I fired too soon because what I did was I smacked into the island. So now I have a problem. <laughs> so a Yamato with 18 inch guns and my Lennon bow tanking it, slightly angled. I'm going, man, I get, and he already took out one of my turrets, so I, it's being repaired. And I was not going to angle myself to get my inside turret in. However, we're pushing ourselves inwards to maintain the Yamato's uh, broadside. And look at that. Three Citadels with the one battery firing. We're going to get the other one away. We take the shot. Three more Citadels. <laughs> so we just schooled that Yamato there. Six Citadels. Puts at us at 100,000 in damage right there. And we took out the Yamato in close. So some good in close fighting. Now things are going to get real tense here. Right now we are losing this match. However, we are going to end up winning this match. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, what am I going to do right now? I know I have a Conqueror back there. We probably have a... I have this Terpitz I have to worry about. Because if I show my broadside to Terpitz, I'm good as dead. We have... A Kutasov coming in, so that's my primary problem at the moment. You get these turrets turned, you see how fast they're turning in. We're going to line up this Kutasov. We want to hit him before he gets those torps away. Okay, there we go. Full broadside. We got him. We took him out. There's our Citadel. And then we he, we got him before his turrets went. So that's our second sinking right there. Now we're at 120,000. So right now, we still have that Conqueror. We have that ship over there to worry about. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, now there's the Conqueror. We have a couple of cruisers still sitting in there. So we're now going to focus on this Conqueror. We're going to get our ship turned. We have beautiful, beautiful firing angles with the uh, with the Lennon here. And so now we're going to target up that uh, Conqueror who's sitting at a good range. We're reloaded. We want to get all our turrets on him. We're going to take the shot. Now I'm thinking, man, we should be able to sink the Conqueror here. Unfortunately, we don't get the sinking. And then, guess what? Our Mogami and a Wichita show up. <laughs> oh, man, talk about being tense here. So now my focus is on these cruisers. I am going to completely ignore the Wichita. I'm going for the Mogami because of the torpedoes right now. That's my main threat. He more than likely has torps in the water. We're going to get the shots on him. Boom, we wipe him out. Three Citadels right there. He's gone now. However, I am completely being uh, smacked down here. I'm, I got 5,000 hull. Unfortunately, the Mogami got all those torps away. We tried to uh, we tried to get through the uh, the middle in that one spot. Unfortunately, we didn't do it. And we got our three sinkings though, 156,000 in damage. And there, someone just took out the Witch Duck, and we end up winning the match. So a great performance from the Lennon here. Ketrov does work pretty good on here. And so I think either commander would be great, Lev or Kedroff. You can always check out my uh, Lev guide and gameplay. Either way, Ketroff performed well. We got some icebreakers there. And that's it. Let's see how well we did overall. So 156,000. Um, we ended up with uh, three sinkings. Uh, we have a whole whack of Citadels, second on the leaderboard. Uh, overall, great match with the Lennon. It's an average match. Average matches of the Lennons are going to be good matches. We earned about 200, 200 and so thousand in credits. So not bad there. Great uh, 5,000 experience and premium. Either way, great match. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, uh, please give me a like. And, of course, be wonderful if you would subscribe for future videos on my channel for World of Warships. This is Spotted Gecko Gamer, and I'll see you guys on the seas next time.